Tyler, okay. you got a story about this and how, how, because <laughs> I've been doing this for years with people. So it's called robbing the bank. <laughs> and, and I'm convinced that when Joseph and our other business partner, Nathan, talk about this practice they did of, hey, let's get ourselves psyched up. Let's get into this mindset. Let's get into the zone. Like, let's pretend like we're robbing a bank. I'm convinced that it was more of a reality than they lead on to believe that like literally if they didn't sell much, that meaning like they were possibly we going were to brought to that point where robbing a bank may not be too, so far fetched. Uh, but the first time I ever heard it, we were literally pulling out of a Chipotle and just turning on to the main road, going back to the office and just out of complete nowhere, they started to rob a bank. I had to change my pants because it caught me off guard. <laughs> What is up, everybody? This is episode 56 of the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris. I am your host, <laughs> Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. <laughs> oh! Woo! Yeah, yeah. Man, that just felt right. That does feel better out no here. No idea why. I don't either. All right, did guys. Did you hear the way that sounded? It did. That felt good. It's almost like we tapped into our inner savage. It is almost like we connected with the inner wolf. That is the topic of today's podcast. It is connecting with your inner wolf, your inner savage, whatever you want to call your it. Your emotional center. Absolutely. And so we're just going to jump right into it. Um, this is something that we actually do as a, not really as a training, but as a give back like the ultimate icebreaker of all time when we do trainings True. now oh uh, you're talking about accessing the inner savage yeah, yeah 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 well the reason you want to be able to do that is people don't know like you run into people all the time and it feels like you're dealing with a puppet like they're like oh hmm, hmm. robotic Get up go to work never feel don't let anything in <laughs> or touch or hurt or feel good or not How's that sound? Mr. Customer, if I could show you a way uh -huh. that would be less money and more effective, is that something you might be interested in? Is that something you might find interesting <laughs> to you? No, dipshit, I want to lose money, <laughs> spend a lot, and not have any effective stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's what we're talking about here. That's a good example. Tyler. Well, and we just, we, there's so many people, and you've been talking about this a lot lately with the all in and all off. It, we just find that everybody lives in this kind of middle area, this just yeah. kind of bland, uneventful, unemotional, just kind of go with the flow. Hey man, how you doing? Good. Hey man, what's going on? Nothing much, man. Just how's life? Good. Yeah, it's all good. Can't complain. Can't <laughs> you know, complain. You know, all that kind of stuff. And, and are they really tapping into their emotional, like you said, their yeah. emotional center and really going all in, in all areas of their life. I want to ask somebody that someday, be like, hey, what's up, man? You doing good? And I want to hear somebody go, I'm fucking awesome. <laughs> I mean, I want to hear, I want or somebody. Or awful. Or awful. Either way, yeah. Just look at you and go, <laughs> <laughs> and just start crying. I mean, yeah. access whatever is going on. Yeah. So, Tyler, Absolutely. you got a story about this and how, how, because <laughs> I've been doing this for years with people. So it's called robbing the bank. <laughs> and, and I'm convinced that when Joseph and our other business partner, Nathan, talk about this practice they did of, hey, let's get ourselves psyched up. Let's get into this mindset. Let's get into the zone. Like, let's pretend like we're robbing a bank. I'm convinced that it was more of a reality than they lead on <laughs> to believe that, like, literally, if they didn't sell much, that meaning, like, they were possibly we going to brought to that point where robbing a bank may not be too so far-fetched uh, but the first time i ever heard it we were literally pulling out of a chipotle and just turning on to the main road going back to the office and just out of complete nowhere they started to rob a bank and the essence of this process of robbing a bank is just that it's tapping into that savage that wolf that that emotional center and just releasing all of it like screaming to a level that like you almost lose your voice instantly by doing instantly. so and just tapping into that raw just alpha just ah, like like oh, you, yeah. like to where it gives your whole body chills and where your heart's racing and it's just real like it's, it's real. real like it's real it's 
terrifying almost to yourself when you yep. tap into that, especially for the first time. Um, but they did that in the car and I was in the back. I had no idea this was about to happen. And I literally almost had to change my pants. Yeah. I mean, it was terrible. I almost had a heart attack because um, it <laughs> caught me off guard. Uh, but since then, we've done it many times um, through our trainings. When we have all our new coordinators come into town, uh, we'll get to a certain part of the training where they're going to have to get up and speak in front of everybody. And a lot of times that's like the perfect, perfect uh, environment to really make everybody incredibly uncomfortable. And so Gross Joseph, Joseph will in. bust in the room. <laughs> He'll bust in the room and then all of a sudden it's it is just full go. Everybody get down. Yeah. Nobody yeah. moves. Nobody, nobody gets, gets hurt. hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about just bringing that side of you out that more than likely in the last 5, 10, 20, 30, maybe ever, it's never been brought out. Yeah, people, um, people spend too much time cramming who they really are down yeah. and trying to pretend like there's somebody else in those situations. And everybody's different. Like, I don't expect when we robbed the bank, mm -hmm. like I, we've had some really good ones that aren't loud like me. Like, like they're some legit, creepy ones. some creepy yeah. ones. Like, like they access, sinister. they're sinister. I mean, they get in there and, uh, and access that emotional center. But man, I, I, we have also had some ones that I literally, I looked at them and was like, have you, what? you remember what was somebody stood up one time and they're like, okay, everybody get down. Everybody and get down. Every, and, and we Nobody were all moves. like, are you <laughs> like, serious? Like, is this a musical? Is this, a <laughs> <laughs> is this West Side Story? <laughs> is about to rob us? <laughs> no, it's more like, uh, do you want to build a snowman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But then we've had I some mean, that literally like have jumped up on desks and broken desks oh, yeah. and swung up. Uh, what was it? A sword? That What did John Coiner oh, swing yeah. that one time? Like a sword. And oh, yeah. Almost broke another table. And you and, may want be wondering right now why we have swords at training. Just... Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, and they are sharp. And they are sharp. But yeah, I would encourage you to actually go through this exercise yourself and then have other people go through it just to see how it's not so much how you react and seeing how others react when you put them in those scenarios. I mean, it is very, very telling uh, because they're going to push back. Like we had someone on this last training. She just wouldn't do it. Would not like, do it. I'm not. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Obviously, we don't force them to do True. it. We're not like, you know, robbing them to rob the bank. Uh, but like. <laughs> It's, it's, it, it's wildly uncomfortable, uh, but as you guys know, it's basically Joseph's mantra in life and, and so much of what we talk about is that embracing discomfort, seeking uh, discomfort in all areas. And the first time I did it, I mean, like my heart rate, it took me probably an hour for my heart rate to go back down. Um, after doing it, and I think it might be the one time I've ever cussed in front of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it just came out of me. I think it was the F word too. Like it was yeah. bad. It was like just came out, and I was just like, "What was that?" that you finally hit your inner <laughs> savage. That inner savage that doesn't uh, care. Yeah. That exactly. inner savage that will accomplish anything when you tap into that emotional power. Emotions are powerful, man. They are. And and people that cannot tap into them or cannot cannot uh, access those at will. That's a problem. And where is that important? Like, what, like what, why is it important to do that? So what happens when all of a sudden those people get up to speak in front of our groups after they've done that? So one of the things that happens when you're able to do that is that you may deliver the same message, but now it's coming from the real you. Hmm. And when it comes from the real you, they believe, they buy, or if you're talking about a spouse or something, mm -hmm. like literally with, I've had some people rob the bank with us and I'm like, oh my gosh, they've not made love in years. <laughs> like, like it's been missionary position. Nobody <laughs> say anything for years. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it, that's a problem. Like that's a problem. That's a, <laughs> this is Tyler. But, but do you understand what I'm saying? Like nobody has felt the real them and yeah. their power in life is being the real them. Cause we believe, and Tyler talks about it, that every single person is born and gifted with these natural, beautiful, God-given abilities. Mm. And, and we spend so much time covering them up cause we're scared of the real us. And, and I just have, uh, I've been moving more and more away from that, away from yeah. who cares what other people think. And, um, because when I access that, it unconsciously and consciously gives other people around me the right to access it too and be the real them. And I love being around real, raw, authentic, right? The other thing it I does. I kind of like being around you now. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> just like the beard's growing on you. <laughs> it's, it's literally growing on It you. is, literally. 
<laughs> it's another thing it does is it helps you embrace that whole do it anyway uh, yeah. mentality because if at any point in the day you can harness that type of right. um, power from within then it gives you the ability in those situations where you don't feel like doing something in those situations where you just may be flat tired it may be the end of the day you've been up early getting stuff done you've you know, had 30 presentations and it's time to give number 31 and you just don't have anything left in you to be able to tap into that it's like the most raw source of energy it's like yep. it's basically like tapping into your internal like nuclear power plant that's right and being able to pull some of that out to get you to go and do it anyway and to realize that nobody cares that you're tired nobody cares that nope. you don't feel like it um, but that they deserve uh, the energy that you brought in meeting one and meeting 31 that's and right. it helps you kind of harness that uh, at least that's that's the way I use it on a daily basis because there's so many times that uh, you just have to do stuff that you don't feel like doing uh, but what is it that you draw on to make yourself do it uh, I think it's those moments honestly that that make a person into who they will ultimately become is those moments where you know you should do something but you don't feel like that's doing right. it and what is it that brings that out of you to be able to go ahead and do it anyway i mean that's... we take it to a different place too this is when i come home yeah. from and and just totally giving it everything i got mm. and i walk through the door and my son comes up and jumps in my arms and what am i going to do give him a halfway hug mm -hmm. oh daddy's tired whatever no immediately i access that power plant mm -hmm. that nuclear power plant and it's like boom what is up buddy it yeah. is good to see you he's like you want to play basketball sometimes it's the furthest thing like i walked in mm -hmm. tired sometimes that would be the furthest thing from what i would want to do but I access that power and what do i really want i want that time with him yeah. and that connection with him he likes playing basketball he's 10 years old i go out we play horse and he beat me yesterday <laughs> <laughs> That made me mad. I bet. <laughs> but, but, and then the inner savage came and out. Then the, and, then, and then I was like, okay, let's see who can hold their breath on the bottom of the pool longer. <laughs> but, but no, he's a competitor. And, yeah. and, but to access that, or when you, know, you come in from a, from a week in Georgia and you've done nothing but talk mm -hmm. and listen to people in presentations, yep. and you come in and Maitland wants to talk. Mm -hmm. You have to access that emotional core yeah. and immediately the power's there and you're locked in with her and it's in, and you're engaging and, and yeah. that's, that's when this really matters. When you master this, you can really make it matter there and you can pull the most out of those relationships and those connections, which will inevitably lead to a life well lived. Absolutely, that's, and that's a tough one, I mean, that's, that's tough. Uh, just as you're saying that, I'm thinking back to this weekend and, and the fact that I was tired and, and I took a nap like yesterday at one point. It was while Arden was sleeping. I was just like, thank God she fell asleep so I can yeah. take a nap. But that like that mentality alone, like mm -hmm. I shouldn't be thanking God that she fell asleep. Like I should have right. wanted that time to be able to spend with her. But I'm like, right. oh my gosh, thank you. She fell asleep so I can you know, fall asleep for an hour. Uh, but what is like, what, what is any of this worth if when you are home and you're with your family that you don't have that energy source to pull from uh, right. to be able to go all in like what is what does it mean to be able to have it when you're gone and have it when you're at work if you don't have it when you're at home yep. um, so that's I mean that's ultimately you talk about having success without fulfillment that's oh yeah that's the definition of it um, is that a wolf is that a wolf? <laughs> you know what? A lot of people are like, their whole life's goal is to, uh, is to hear well done at the end of their life, you know? Mm -hmm. My life's goal is to, is to just barely squeak in up there and to hear, damn, that was a ride. <laughs> like you, you pulled it all out. That's mm -hmm. unbelievable. And you made it. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. But, I mean, gosh, it should be... I want people to, I want to see people live life to the fullest. Don't you? Absolutely. And I want to be around people that are living life to the fullest. I, 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 it's hard to be around people that are playing small. It's really difficult for me to be around people that are playing small. And so stop playing small. Stop playing small in your relationships. Stop, stop playing small at work. Stop playing small with your kids. Stop playing small with your family. Stop playing small. If you're an adventure seeker, go, go get one now if you are a traveler set up your trips now um stop playing small like if, if it's out there it's for you and you can make it happen access that inner power plant that savage that we like to call it the wolf mm -hmm. <laughs> so guys with that 
harness it, and go out there and ask somebody to do it for you. What? Go, go, ask somebody, go, go ask somebody to rob a bank for you and just see how they react. Yeah. <laughs> we, we Actually, how about this? If you will send us a video of you robbing a bank, not literally because that would get us in a whole lot of trouble. Like this could be in your living room, in your car, in your office. Like the more awkward, the better. But if the you send awkward. us a video of you pretending, keyword, to rob a bank, we will show all of them on an upcoming episode, and that will be hilarious. That is a good idea. <laughs> because we've got some videos of ours already. We've got those oh, I'll archived put mine somewhere. On there. I'll put mine on there. But if you will pretend to rob a bank, send, it, send us a video. Number one, we'll send you something special back in the mail, uh, but we'll also feature it on one of the upcoming videos with the Sales Wolves podcast. Absolutely. So with that, I'm Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Oh. All right.